Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm here to give you a little guided tour of Mastering Manga 2. In stores October 23rd, although I do believe it's arriving even earlier than that. More on that later. But let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now, just as with Mastering Manga 1, a big part of my goal was authenticity. I tried very hard to make the interior illustrations look like authentic manga. Last thing we want is another one of these American-made books that really don't look like the real thing. So um, hopefully Mastering Manga 2 is a worthy successor uh, to Mastering Manga 1 in that regard. Early in the book we have this page called Anatomy of a Manga Panel, which really sets out everything that I try to cover in this book. How to draw the head and face, how to draw the human body. This, of course, covered to some degree in the first book. But then backgrounds, um, composition of the panel, as well as conveying depth. Um, all of these new topics, I think, really expand nicely on what was covered in the first book. Now, a huge part of uh, both of these books uh, is the step-by-step -step lessons. We have 30 uh, new step-by-step -step lessons for you, and uh, those of you who are familiar with the first book, you know that my big focus is on making them doable. I really hate when there's a huge leap from one step to the next, so you'll see that the steps are very gradual in my book taking you through every step of the process, showing you every single line so that you can follow along and reproduce exactly what you see in the finished illustration without having to guess about uh, how I got from one step to the next one. As you can see here, I introduced the uh, cat girl character, which is uh, something I definitely didn't get to in the first book. One of the things I wanted to make sure I did with this book was to cover different ethnicities. So throughout the book you'll see characters that come from different racial backgrounds, and I think that's helpful for those of you who create characters uh, that uh, you know are maybe breaking away from this default, vaguely Caucasian-looking uh, manga style that we see so much. There is some overlap between the two books, but I made sure that uh, if there were any topics that were covered a second time, I was always dealing with it in a different way. So here you see uh, a kind of reality check of what the human eye looks like versus a slightly stylized manga version and a highly stylized manga version. And again and again throughout the book, you'll see um, you know new things uncovered that I really wasn't able to get to in book one. Speaking of which, uh, here is a spread about glasses and hats. I really had fun breaking into new territory uh, in this book, especially in regards to character creation. Here you see a page showing the uh, body proportions of a toddler compared to that of a child, a preteen, and then an adult. And uh, over here, of course, you see that I continued my uh, way of speaking directly <laughs> to the reader by way of these uh, you know, occasional comic book pages. That proved popular, I thought, from the first volume, so I made sure uh, that I uh, continued with that in Mastering Manga 2. With both of the Mastering Manga books, it's a big goal of mine to cover topics that other books leave out. Uh, so here we have the body in profile, uh, as well as the body from behind. This is the female page, and then there's a uh, male page as well. And uh, not only that, but I also had the chance to cover unusual points of view, uh, such as the bird's eye view and the worm's eye view, both of those step-by-step -step lessons new in this volume. And I tried to coordinate between different lessons. So here you're learning to draw the body uh, in a bird's eye view, and here you're learning to draw the head in a bird's eye view. That way you can combine the two lessons uh, and do the entire illustration head to toe. The reference pages are always a big part of any Mastering Manga book. Here you see um, a detailed illustration of how to draw the back, uh, also the neck in profile, and here a sort of unusual pose where the body is turned away uh, and he's looking back at us. This is of course the male version, but I have a, a companion page that shows the uh, female version of all three poses. The first book had a pretty thorough section on drawing hands, but unfortunately there wasn't enough space for a step-by-step -step lesson on drawing hands, so we definitely get that in with this book, as well as a quick lesson on how to draw a hand holding a sword. Foreshortening is another topic that I unfortunately wasn't able to get to uh, in the first volume. Uh, in this book it's covered uh, in this reference page you see here, as well as in a step-by-step -step lesson. 
The poses section from the first book proved popular, so I made sure that I got another such section in for this volume, including new poses such as sleeping or sitting cross-legged, as well as step-by-step uh, -step lessons on specific poses such as a standing kiss uh, and a fight scene different from the first volume, uh, and also a character sitting down, which is something that we didn't get to in the first book. The first volume covered uh, clothing, folds, and wrinkles pretty thoroughly, and I do touch on that again with this volume, but I wanted to make sure I came at this uh, topic from a different angle, and so here we see using clothing choices as a way of expressing character. Uh, essentially the same male character and the same female character, and how different they look uh, wearing different types of clothing. Chibi fans will enjoy this little lesson that shows how to change a full-sized character, I used Talia as my example, into a chibi version of the same character. That's uh, definitely something I wasn't able to get to in the first book, and uh, indeed something I don't think I've ever covered before, even in all of these videos. My personal favorite part of the book is part three, bringing it all together. This is where I show you uh, how to draw different environments, and then panels and page layouts, and really getting into the nuts and bolts of how a manga is made. The first book had a section on uh, backgrounds that was very much focused on teaching perspective drawing. Uh, so a, a lot of the subject matter had straight lines and angular objects. This time I'm teaching more of the organic backgrounds, like this forest scene, which I teach in a step-by-step -step way, so you can reproduce this drawing line by line. Uh, there's also a step-by-step uh, -step lesson on drawing rainy days. Speaking of which... Here's a reference page uh, showing water effects. So how do you draw someone with a dry looking hair versus wet looking hair? Uh, or a surface outside that looks dry as opposed to uh, one just after rainfall. Another topic that's new to this volume is light and shadow. Here in a step-by-step -step way I show you where to apply uh, the shadows so as to make it look like light is coming through the window. Uh, and as I said before, I'm always trying to combine lessons. So uh, this character sitting here, you're not just left trying to figure that out for yourself. You go back to the step-by-step -step lesson and you're shown in a line-by-line -line way how to draw this exact pose. People are often asking for videos that deal with how to actually make a manga, how to put everything together into the panels and so forth, and that's really what this book does uh, in these final pages. Here's three different compositions of the same scene. Here we see the difference between uh, doing a moment in just one panel versus breaking it into two. Here's a page showing how to create the illusion of depth using nothing but pen and ink uh, to achieve that effect. In Mastering Manga 1, I touched lightly on the topic of uh, the page turn in comic book storytelling. Here I get to really dig into it deeper, showing how two consecutive panels tell the story in a really quite different way from these five different panels, one of which is held back behind the turn of the page. I'm always interested in showing people how many different options they have. So this page on inking shows essentially the same penciled panel inked in three radically different ways. Um, I really do think this last uh, section of the book is going to give uh, aspiring uh, comic book creators a lot of uh, ideas uh, for you know applying to their own projects. And indeed we build all the way up to full page layouts here comparing two different ways of laying out the exact same page. All right, so there you have it, Mastering Manga 2. I really hope you'll consider it a worthy successor uh, to the first book. And keep in mind that if you can't find Mastering Manga 1, uh, and for whatever reason Ma Mastering Manga 2 is the only book that you find in the store, you can start with Mastering Manga 2. It, uh, it, it was designed in such a way that you're uh, not left feeling that you missed out on something uh, when you start uh, at the beginning of the book. So thanks so much for watching this video, and of course a very big thank you to anyone who gets either of these books. Um, I, I greatly appreciate your support. You guys honestly have no idea um, what you've done for me over the years uh, by embracing these books, by watching these videos. I really greatly appreciate it. But uh, I think it's time to end this video. Thanks so much for watching it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.